Welcome everybody. I'm here with Lee Thomas, the CEO of Construction Check. He's been in our incubator for about a year and a half now, and I've known Lee for a while. So super excited to share his story. I think it's a compelling and interesting story and demonstrates really well like how a lot of the best startups in our industry are being created by industry people. So thanks, Lee, for taking the time. Tell us a little bit about your background. Undergrad in uh, accounting. I started in uh, this uh, industry as a controller uh, for a firm, U.S. Cost out of Atlanta. They were one of the major uh, cost engineering, cost estimating firms. Worked with them for about four years and you know, thought it was an interesting industry and then went to their competitor, uh, which was a, a much larger company in 2007. And so that's how I kind of wound up in this industry, kind of understanding it from the business aspect versus the, the technical aspect of it. And how long have you been working in the business? It's been about 20 years now. So one of the things we talk about is, you know, it's only crazy people that go start companies. It doesn't make any rational sense to leave the comfort of a job or the comfort of having support around you to go do something and venture off on your own. What what compelled you to go do a startup, especially a tech startup, which is very different than building a services business? This is my second tech startup. Uh, when I uh, started at U.S. Cost in 2003, I had been working on a tech startup called uh, uh, eClubs, which was about you know group investing. And this is right as the internet bubble burst. And so uh, we had built some technology, got our first subscriber on. I was my own uh, internet service provider for a while using Exo Communication. Uh, so you know, once the technology and the bubble, bu the bubble burst, uh, I had to go get a job. Uh, and then that's how I landed up at U.S. Cost. So this is not my first rodeo, you know, building a tech company and, and using my own resources to, to try to launch something. What problem, I think you were working the business and we see this pretty common, like you identify a problem, you look around like everybody else doesn't see it and like, why aren't they seeing it? So you choose, you chose to launch your startup around solving, a, solving some problems. What, what specific problems are you trying to solve? Well, the specific problem we we're trying to solve is the problem that you have between owners and contractors. And when I got into this industry, you know, because I wasn't a, a technical person doing the, doing the job, I had to research a lot to figure out, you know, what what this business was really about. And when you do the research, what you find out is everybody, you know, knows that we have a problem in this country with cost overruns. It's about a one six about a one point six trillion dollar annual problem. And when you look at the research, uh, both owners and, and contractors agree that there needs to be a uh, some standards set, but they don't agree on who should set those standards. For us, being in this business and then really understanding where the value proposition is at, uh, that's why we chose to focus on creating our solution that basically can answer the question for owners or be that middleman between owners and contractors to either you know help them resolve uh, issues or to help owners get out of the gate properly. So our whole goal is to address the problem of cost overruns on the front end, which is really more in the pre-construction side of it and really where owners are trying to make decisions. Uh, and they need an independent source that can help them do that that doesn't have a dog in the fight. So we've chosen to focus really where our core business is at. And that's what we do for a lot of customers that we service right now. Um, we're on the front end. And so they're making decisions. They have options they want to look at. And so uh, what better place than something like Construction Check where we're either helping those owners develop the information to make decisions or we're validating those informa that information for owners. And the beautiful thing about our solution uh, from the federal government perspective, uh, it is federally mandated, which means that every construction project that uh, is executed by the government, whether that's coming through GSA or any of the agencies, they have to get an independent cost estimate done. The thing that's not there is the infrastructure for that. And that is what we're creating is the infrastructure for that to be the 800 pound gorilla in the room for uh, the government. When you first started the business, say, let's say the first six months when you started the company, what do you think was like one of the hardest things you had to adapt and learn and what was like your some of your biggest challenges in the first six months just nobody knew me when you're a new business you're starting out in the first six months nobody knows you it's like going to a 
uh, you play basketball and you go to somebody somewhere out of your area and you're trying to get on the court. Hey, guys, can I play? And they're like, oh, we already got the team set. <laughs> and <laughs> it's hard to get on. And then somebody new comes along and it's like, hey, man, can I run with you guys? And they say, well, yeah, come on, man. And they figure out that you can play. But then everybody else gets a chance to see that you can play as well. And so, you know, for the first six months or the first couple of years are just nobody knows you. What do you think the last 90 days some of your biggest challenges have been? Fast forward to today, like how has that changed? Last 90 days is really about there's there's more business and trying to slow that down. But really, the last 90 days of challenges have been just trying to launch a technology project. And it's really difficult when you are a um, seasoned business that's creating a, a technology solution, but you don't have the proper resources to really execute on the technology side. And so it's a slower process than, you know, I like, you know, but it's one of those processes that we, we, we have to endure through and uh, everybody wants to jump in once you've got the solution built. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit different, you know, challenge. So the last 90 days is that's what it's about. And, you know, just trying to really push the team to, to execute on the technology side. Who do you think are the most enlightened in our industry? The most enlightened in our industry are the, are the architects and the engineers that give us the projects. Owners don't have a clue that these services or companies like ours exist as a standalone. And so when you're dealing with, you know, customers like the DOT and, you know, they say, hey, well, Lee, we didn't know you guys existed as a standalone company. That means that, you know, we haven't articulated the value proposition uh, correctly to a wider audience. And the owners really just don't know that, you know, there's independent firms that are out here. So the architects and engineers are the most ones that are more familiar with what we do. We look at our industry, like the technology industry, and then you look at construction, right, at a, at a leadership level. Uh, two of the least diverse industries on the planet. Uh, and then you intersect them and it gets even worse. How do you think it's been like, I mean, you, you've got to try to figure out you know, I don't know, fit in if the fit in is the right word with the tech folks and then also with construction leadership. But has that been a factor for your fundraising efforts for because we hear a lot, right? We hear a lot. We talk a lot about it. Have you seen any of that firsthand? Well, yeah, you know, in the Atlanta market, it's, it's a little bit you know, more challenging, you know, because you're you're in the construction industry and then uh, a lot of people don't understand this space. Right. And so the people that do understand the space are outside of uh, outside of Atlanta and, uh, you know, California, and places like that. So it's a little bit more challenging in terms of the leadership, uh, you know, here in Atlanta to really find somebody other than yourself that really knows the space and can help us, us navigate in this space. But from a technology standpoint, it's just really hard uh, to kind of articulate it correctly where you, you're talking to the right stakeholders that can see this opportunity the market is there revenue is there that we already are producing so you know what's the what's the hold up you know uh, it's just a, it's a little bit challenging for us what would be your advice to um someone graduating from a construction management program whatever architecture degree what would your advice be to them around engagement with tech and doing a startup um, I mean, there's there's nothing that exciting about starting up an architecture firm, really. But what what advice would you give them in terms of the, if their long term goal was to build a tech startup? You got to actually find a niche area, you know, to do it in, because when you look at the amount of uh, investments that are are happening in technology right now, there's a lot of people that's coming to the table with solutions that are actually not in the business. You you have it from a theoretical standpoint, but you haven't actually been in the business to really figure out what customers want. And then you got a lot of sunken costs that these organizations have already had uh, or invested in technology. So the question becomes, what is your solution going to do? What is the switching cost, which you never really factor in about, hey, I've already got, you know, to get this organization from here to there. And how is your solution going to be of value to them uh, without disrupting their organization right now? So I would say, hey, you know, go into the industry, learn the industry very well and see the solutions that are out there before you head down the road. Because, you know, there's no reason to start to, hey, I got this idea and we'll go raise some, you know, some initial seed, you know, pre-seed capital 
to test this deal, this idea and then go out here and try to discover customers. This industry that we participate in is all relationship driven. And so the way to get on projects, the way to get your technology out there, you have to be a part of the ecosystem, but you have to have the relationships. It's very difficult to just come in and say, hey, I got this brand new solution that is going to change the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not. How, I mean, yeah, you know, I've been trying to build this community now for several years and it seems to finally be taking off a little bit. So how important is it? I mean, the community aspect of the industry compared to other tech markets and other tech industries. Well, when you look at it from other tech industries, you mean, you can, it's depending on who they're selling to, right? So you can develop tech, tech, tech idea. And if it's commercial and it's, you know, for people, I think you can get it out there very quickly. When you're talking about the you know AEC community, which is very uh, relationship driven, you have to have the relationships. And if you don't have those things in place, it's going to be very difficult. So the ecosystem that you're building with with Shadow Ventures, you know, brings a lot of the talent under one roof, and now people can actually talk to each other. That's in the space, and we can communicate kind of you know what the challenges are. But it's one of these industries that. It's very, it's a very hard, you know, nut to crack uh, if you haven't uh, been in it and know the players and know the relationship and know how things work. So you're, you're walking into a building tomorrow and you step into an elevator and Jeff Bezos is there <laughs> and you have like literally five floors on an elevator with Jeff Bezos. What do you say to Jeff Bezos? Do you want to change the world? I'm tired of the conversation of taxing the rich when we see so much waste of construction cost overruns. And so let's, you know, look at a different solution that saves the taxpayers and saves society so we can build a better society for it. And that's what we're really focused on, you know, with Construction Tech is bringing a solution that actually makes a difference. So if you want to be a part of that, Jeff, you know, then, hey, uh, I would love to connect with you and tell you more about Construction Tech. So you're not going to ask for a free ticket on his rocket? (laughs) (laughs) That would be nice. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for taking the time. I know startup founders are always busy, busy selling, busy coding, busy doing stuff. So thanks for your time and um, we'll keep talking. Thank you guys very much for having me.